Well, as we've been learning, Bible prophecy matters. Bible prophecy is what sets the scriptures apart from all other religions throughout all of human history. In fact, it's interesting to note that how can you know for sure that the Bible's true? That's a great question, right? Don't you want to know that? The answer is Bible prophecy. 100% of the Bible has been accurately fulfilled in the prophecies that pertain to God speaking to us. The ones that remain, we can bank on it. They too will be 100% fulfilled. Today we're gonna to be looking at a message that's gonna challenge us. In fact, more than anything, how about this friend? It's gonna be an exhortation. An exhortation is a great biblical word. It means that you're gonna hear from the Bible uh, to be challenged and to be, as it were, uh, uh, prepared. There's gonna be a strong word of being ready to meet the Lord. And so words like this, you're gonna hear a lot of them, and you should. Words like ready. Are you ready? How do I get ready? And watch. How do I go to college? How do I take care of my family, do my job? How do I uh, do whatever I do and be watching? Oh, we'll tell you how. Spiritually ready, spiritually watching. And then the word pray. We're gonna be uh, challenged to pray at all times, to be in a mindset of prayer. And if we do those three things, then the last thing will come naturally, supernatural. And that is looking up. We're gonna be looking up. Not physically looking up and you know parking yourself on your rooftop waiting for Jesus to return. Spiritually looking up. No matter what you're doing, no matter where you're at, from designing something, building a home, to vacation, you're in the spiritual attitude of being ready because you're praying, looking up, and you're watching. So a, a good friend of mine who is now with Jesus, he said, Dr. Ed Heinsen of Liberty University, he said, God didn't give us Bible prophecy to scare us. He gave us Bible prophecy to prepare us. So that's awesome and exciting. So grab your Bibles, open them up. Let's dive into the study of God's word today. see these things, Jesus challenges us regarding wars and rumors of wars. Wars and rumors of wars. Isn't it amazing the Bible says, you say, well, there's always wars and rumors of wars. Yes, but in the context of Matthew 24, Jesus is talking about on a global scale. Think of it now for a moment. For those of you who are skeptics, we have an itinerant preacher who was raised as a carpenter by his stepdad in a little country town up north called Nazareth. A lot of scandalous talk about his coming into the world and his mother and all that stuff, but we've moved on from that. It's been some 30 years. And now he comes on the scene and he says, hey, you asked me a question about what's it gonna be like at the end of the world? Well, one of the things will be that there's gonna be a global conversation taking place. It's going to be rumored about constantly about wars. Oh, and there will be wars. And I want to show you a list right now. I think we have this list. I want you to just look at this. These are the conversations in news now today. China versus Taiwan. Unless something happens, ladies and gentlemen, which I, I guess it's not going, who knows? China could swallow up Taiwan and the world would just keep going. America would do nothing. America, I don't think, can. China versus the United States. That's always on the table. And, and increasing. Believe it or not, Venezuela versus the United States. Are you kidding me? There have been some serious weaponry that Iran and Russia has, have moved into Venezuela, pointed at us. Right now, they're there. North Korea versus Japan. This is so sad for Japan because when Japan tried to take over the world and we beat them up, we said, no, no armies and navies for you. We'll be your protector. Sign here and you can't do this anymore because we can't trust you guys. So we'll be your protector. Big old big brother America, we're going to take care of you. And so now North Korea wants to beat up Japan and Japan's like reaching in its pockets and ain't got nothing to defend itself with. Look into America. And North Korea versus United States. 
What's his name's been launching uh, test ICBMs again? Iran versus the United States. This has been going on for a very long time. Russia versus the United States. Russia versus Israel. That's a constant dynamic. Because Russia is in an interesting way because it uses, it uses land that's north of Israel, like Syria, and it uses it possibly areas of Lebanon via Hezbollah. We'll see that in a second. But if you know Ezekiel chapter 38, the Bible speaks exactly as to what eventually will happen regarding Russia and Israel. Now, when I say Lebanon versus Israel, this is not Lebanon, the nation that you would know. This is Hezbollah, who has, take, who has commandeered Lebanon. And they are sworn enemies of Israel to wipe it off the face of the earth. Iran versus Israel. Iran versus Saudi Arabia. Did you know that these two are constantly pointing weapons at each other to annihilate each other? Did you know that they can't stand each other? They are the two different houses of Islam. You say, Jack, why do you point these things out? Jesus said there'll be days like this. Jesus said there'll be days like this. There'll be days like this, my Jesus said. Yeah. <laughs> it inspired a song. I'm kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Here's one thing right now in the news happening now. Syrian Kurds suspend anti-ISIS operations to brace for Turkish invasion. This is a big deal. It's been announced to Turkey that Turkey is about to invade Syria. Most likely, it's going to involve the United States. You say, what? We just got done fighting decades of war. You say, well, why, why is this even being discussed? Why would we help in this situation? Now, remember, all of this flies under the banner of wars and rumors of wars. Do you know when your economy is in bad condition? Do you know what you do when your economy stinks? You start a war. Why did Hitler stir up Europe and start a war? Because their economy was in the tank. Whenever your economy stinks, start a war. It does wonders for your economy. Why would we get involved in this? Because our economy is in the tank. Pretty weird, isn't it? Pretty strange. So as a skeptic, you've got to be thinking, do I believe in the Bible or not? Jesus said there'd be wars and rumors of wars before the end. Number seven, regarding a world in rebellion to Christ. That would be increasing. And I'm going to give you three passages of Scripture that you're going to want to remember and write them down in your Bibles, especially in your margins of your Bibles. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. 1 John 2, 18. Little children, it is the last hour. That <laughs> guy loved John. He's not even talking about last days. John looked at his sundial on his wrist and said, man, we're done. It's like the last hour. I love that. It is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. 2,000 years ago, John had his eyes open, as it were, in his head, looking up. Next verse, check this out. 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Listen, that's a reference to the Trinity, if you think about it. If you deny the deity of Jesus Christ, the Bible says that's because you have a spirit of Antichrist governing your life. Well, I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe that he's who he says he was or who the Bible says he was. That thinking comes from the spirit, the atmosphere of Antichrist. Remarkable, isn't it? Look at 2 John. 2 John 7 says, but many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Friends, many of your cults that you encounter with friends or at your doorstep hold to this view. Remarkable. I just find it fascinating, always fascinating, that once somebody denies Jesus Christ, they become a denier. <laughs> Of all things God, it's remarkable. What's next on the world scene? People want to know. That's what your newsstands are saying in the grocery stores. What's next? Makes me, uh, 
I don't know. I, I don't think normal. I, if, if, I, if I were a computer hacker, this is how I'd spend my time. You know how people always look for directions at P.F. Chang's? <laughs> it's the fortune cookie. <laughs> and it's funny because after you're done eating, it's like, are you going to eat the cookie? <laughs> Everybody, what, what are you going to do with your cookie? You're not going to throw it out, are you? Oh, you like them? Huh? No, they're horrible. I want to see what's inside. Have you noticed that? Are you like that? You. By the way, have you noticed? Fortune cookies are amazing. You're so awesome. You open it up. You're going to meet somebody really interesting tomorrow. It's always just this stuff. Wouldn't you like, if I was a hacker, I'd like to hack into the machine that makes those things and put Bible verses in there. Can you imagine? And then I'd ship them all to China. <laughs> Can you imagine? They open up all these cookies, billion cookies. Every, you start seeing people getting saved all across China because they're reading a fortune cookie. What was in that cookie? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever could be me would believe in him, would not perish, but have everlasting life. Give me that cookie. <laughs> Right? Amazing. Everybody wants to know, what does the new year hold? Well, I don't know. We can speculate. But I have this little list. Uh, first of all, the imminent and sudden appearing of Jesus Christ. That's what I'm rooting for. Or a rush toward worldwide economic solution because the world is in trouble and it's increasingly in debt. <laughs> or an aggressive attempt to reinstate some form of global fear tactic. Like what's happening right now in China, right now, as I speak. The poor Chinese people in Shanghai, in uh, other places, the brutality that's taking place right now, they're, st they're stirring up the next wave to get you masked up and vaxxed up in something new. And they're starting it now. Because the first pass didn't work. Or the imminent and sudden appearing of Jesus Christ. If that doesn't happen, then you can maybe look forward to an obscure but yet fulfilled destruction of Damascus. You say, what? Isn't this something? Right out of the blue. Listen, a lot of biblical scholars in Isaiah chapter 17, they have a hard time placing this particular prophecy in the Bible because the Bible says that regarding Damascus, in conjunction with Jeremiah, that Damascus, it says, in the walls of Damascus, there's going to be a fire that begins, and it is going to consume Damascus. And it's going to be so bad, it says, that Damascus will never be inhabited again by a human being. And when that happens, it says, Israel will suffer from it. Israel and Damascus so close together, that city to the border. Isn't that an interesting, that's Isaiah 17. And scholars don't know, is that possibly the trigger to the Ezekiel 38 battle? But one thing we know for sure, right now Damascus is very well populated. But the Bible says there's coming a day when it's going to be uninhabitable. Wow. Somebody could, in this day and age, somebody could trip over something and set off a nuke. Set off something. Who knows? Wow. Or the imminent and sudden appearing of Jesus Christ. Or a Russian-led Islamic coalition to destroy Israel. Ezekiel 38. Or the imminent or sudden appearing of Jesus Christ. Or an increased global destabilization of laws and rules and order. The world's losing control of itself. Or the imminent and sudden appearing of Jesus Christ. Or an utter collapse of Europe as we know it today. You guys, Europe is hanging on a thread. Like this. Europe is godless, leaderless, and it's in trouble. Or the imminent and sudden appearing of Jesus Christ. Amen. You say, what do you keep saying that for? Because he could come at any moment before any of these things happen. So very quickly, we end with these last two regarding the preparing of his church. I believe God's preparing his church. I believe God's people are going to be doing their jobs, getting married, going to school, doing what you're supposed to do, occupy till he comes, live your life. 
But at the exact same time, you got your head, as it were, spiritually up. You're looking for him all the while. You're doing the hardest thing of all, and that is disciplining your life to stay the course. You got to be ready to meet him today, but plan for the next 100 years. You think about that. But we need to do this for sure. Jude chapter 1 verse 20 starts there by saying, But you, beloved, this is it, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God. That's a great marching order. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. What a great statement. And then finally, number 10, When you see these things regarding living out our lives until he comes, you and I are going to choose how how we're going to live out the rest of our days. And I want to give you this verse and then a commissioning. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. And you do that with meekness and with fear or with honor and respect as you share Christ with others. So church, honestly, stand. I'm going to give you some marching orders. These are things that we need to have in our lives active from this moment on. I just wrote down in my notes to myself, I just called them countermeasures. Whatever the enemy's throwing at you, your home, your life, your business, your health, God in his word gives us countermeasures. Number one, having the right attitude. Have the right attitude about what's going on. Listen, if you're gonna follow Jesus, it's gonna be tough. Can somebody say amen to this? It's gonna be tough. This is so tough of a time. We have to fight and get our minds and our attitudes right in line with scripture because our emotions are so strong and we are so opinionated with our emotions. Watch out. Measure, countermeasure, number one, having the right attitude. Number two, countermeasure, keep yourself ready. Keep yourself ready. Watch out for things that would cause you to get sloppy about your life, spiritually speaking. I've been going to church for six months now. I'm going to take the next six months off. Don't do that. This church stinks. Then go to a church that doesn't stink. But don't stop. Keep yourself ready. Third countermeasure. Avoid compromising situations. Well, you know. No, no, no. I was just curious. Stop it. I just want to see what it'd be like. Get over here. (laughs) Countermeasure number four, resist complacency and spiritual laziness. This is dangerous for all of us. Complacency and spiritual laziness. It's like, oh, again, Number five, exercise extreme judgment regarding information. Simply put, don't believe it. Well, what if you're saying it? Don't believe it. You're supposed to do an Acts 17, 11 on people. Test test everything you hear against the scripture. Well, you hear this guy said, I don't want to hear it. Or if I have to hear it, I want to judge it through the Bible. And then finally this, Galvanize yourself with the Bible. I like the word galvanize. I like that. Why do you galvanize something? To keep it from rusting. Galvanize, you know, stuff galvanized, it's not pretty. Have you noticed that? So look at that thing, it's so shiny over there. It's not galvanized. Not the way I understand it anyway. It's so, so glittery and shiny. That's great. But you know what? For the long haul, I'll take the one that's galvanized. It means it has been treated in such a way that it's impervious to the environment around it. It can snow, rain, hail, heat. It's just there. And to me, that's a picture of the Christian. We've been galvanized. 
The world looks at us and throws heat at us, it throws cold, it throws hail and mud at us, and we're like this. It's just, I mean, it hits us, but it doesn't stick. And how does that happen? We are galvanized with the Word of God. Know the Word and be safe. You are watching Real Life with Jack Hibbs. So that's the key. Think about it. That uh, challenge I just gave you, those marching orders or countermeasures to what the world is trying to do to us, what do we do as believers? How do I live out my practical Christianity in a way that matters? Friends, I've often said it and I'll say it again. If you claim to be a Christian today and you're following Jesus and you're bored, something's very wrong, seriously. To follow Christ is to live the most exciting, dynamic, and effective life possible in this world. I cannot imagine living without him. And so listen, friends, that last challenge kind of sums them all up, doesn't it? To be galvanized. I kind of spent a little bit more time on that one than anything else, to be galvanized, to take something that is subject, listen, to decay and to rot, to have it coated, to have it protected, to have it galvanized in such a way that now its very properties are resilient to this world? That's the Christian life, to live in every aspect of our lives, no matter where they're at. The believer is to be not only galvanized, but we go into a corrosive world and it has no effect on us, but we have total effect on it. That's the key. So friends, listen, so much more to give you at jackhibbs.com, so much there to learn in teaching. But listen, if these studies are being a blessing to you, can you let us know? Can you reach out and let us know? Pray always, please, for us. And then pray about the Lord speaking to your heart if he wants you to help support what we're doing so that we can get into more homes around the world. Let's do this together. If you want to be a sender, I'll be the goer, as it were, in teaching the Word of God and making disciples. God bless you guys. What does the American church of today have in common with the German church that allowed Hitler's evil empire to come to power unchecked? More than you realize. In Letter to the American Church, Eric Metaxas warns of the haunting similarities between today's complacency and yesterday's mistakes, giving prophetic insight into the fate of America if modern believers don't step up to combat the evil that threatens our nation's future. Silence is no longer an option. God calls us to defend the unborn, to confront the lies of cultural Marxism, and to battle the globalist tyranny that crushes human freedom. It's time to fight before it's too late. Find out what that looks like in Letter to the American Church, our gift to you in appreciation for your donation to Real Life Ministries today. Get your copy at jackhibbs.com or call 877-777-2346. Order today. Welcome to Real Life Radio with Jack Hibbs. God's Word never will return void. God's Word is spirit, it's power, and it has its effects. So I want to encourage you to grab your Bibles, open them up, and get ready to learn from God's Word. God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us, but to prepare us. But I think you're going to get a lot out of it, and one of the great reasons You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. How does that happen? By the power of the Holy Spirit. You're gonna get excited about what Jesus Christ wants to do in and through you. Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who are searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life and the teachings of Jack Hibbs with a gift of your choosing. Simply go to jackhibbs.com. 
And there you can simply follow the instructions of how to give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. If you would prefer to call, our toll-free number is 877-777-2346. Again, that's 877-777-2346. And of course, you can write us. Our address is Real Life with Jack Hibbs, Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life.